not going to need any of this. The, uh... So this is where you were supposed to stand up and give a standing of age. That's all right. Sit down. Please sit down. Uh, this is my turn. Uh, uh, I'm going to have two hats tonight. Uh, the first one is the coach of this team because the banquet is about honoring this team. The second one, I'm the only graduating senior. All right? So I'm going to give... I'll give my senior speech. All right? Uh, I want to take you back when we talk about this team. A team doesn't just happen. Uh, a team is developed. You have to build a team. A little bit more than 13 months ago, we were 11 and 11, heading to the ACC tournament. We won two games, COVID hit, and our season was over and we were 13-11. The beginning of something happens when there's an end of something. The season ended. What was going to be the new beginning? The very first thing is you analyze what could you have done better? Yeah, what, what could have happened? And I studied it along with my staff, and I said there's two things that we, we were not able to beat that environment. And the two things that we were not able to do to the level that this program had learned to do was to prepare, prepare, and to have relationships at the deepest level. We then embarked on a journey, and it's been a beautiful 13-month journey. You know, we had four guys who were coming back. We had four guys who were coming in. We met with those guys, and we said, you hear about this transfer portal and all that? We're not doing that. There are two guys that we've earmarked. One of them might come here in spite of Sewell, Theo, it was a lot harder, right, than what he's talking about. I mean, you and me, not, you're not going that direction. And another in Bates, who we needed two mature, older guys to anchor those eight guys. And that was going to be it. And we met with him and he said, we're not doing anything else. And, and so the key word that, that started at that time in order to prepare well and have the, re especially to have the relationships, is a word called commitment. Commitment. I'm committed to you. I'm committed to you and I'm not accepting anybody else. All right? And then we had walk ons come and we said, two of them have really attained the status and have worked so hard, they deserve to be scholarship players. And so Keenan and Michael became our 11th and 12th scholarship players. But we needed to do something different. We brought all the freshmen in in early June. We had never done that. Our freshmen from the year before weren't even able to even live on campus. They didn't know what it was to be a Duke student. They didn't know anything about this university except the Washington Duke, and play, which is not a bad place, don't get me wrong, but they're not paying you know, the bucks they're paying to, they want to live there, not there. And, uh, uh, and my daughter, Debbie, and our staff, uh, we asked dorms, can we take over one floor in one of the dorms? And they said, yes, you can. And it was right next to the Allen Building, across from the chapel, the Union. And every morning, every day in June, they woke up, and when they opened the doors, they saw Duke. But you don't come here to see Duke, you come here to feel Duke. And for a whole month, they felt Duke. And they walked to Cameron. They walked to the Union. They walked to class. And you know what? They didn't walk alone. They walked together. And by the end of June, all four of those guys would tell you where they were brothers. Right, Trev? Right, Paula? All you guys, you four guys, you had each other's backs. And then we brought the rest of the team in July. 
And what we did, we've never done this before. We had a, you know, they take a lot of different courses here. We developed a brotherhood curriculum where every day for at least an hour, sometimes 90 minutes, they had a class. They had a class on our, on our culture. They had a class in finance. They had a class in social media. They met everybody in our program. We would have people come and sit with them. We're going to introduce you to the sixth floor of Schwartz Butters. And those people would come in. My team, the team behind the team, would come in and explain what it meant to be part of this program. And we did that for a whole month. And it was beautiful. And by the end of the summer, I said, we better damn prepare as well as we're doing the relationship thing. Because the relationships were rock solid. Rock solid. And then these kids prepared. My staff did an amazing job. Not just the coaching staff, but everybody around. And I'm not going to thank everybody. It's not what I'm going to do tonight. I'm just thanking all of you together because we didn't do this by one person just doing their job. We did it by everybody, by everybody doing their job. And so you know what? The other people that did their job were the parents. Thank you. Thank you for trusting us. You let me, my coaches, and my, the infrastructure, the team, you let us, you trusted us. You let us do our thing with, with your guy. And you know what? Your guy, your guy became a man this year. Your guy became a part of something bigger than him. Your guy won two championships. And a lot of it had to do with the trust that the parents put in us and how you acted at games. Yeah, we watch you. We watch you. You know what? You didn't cheer for your guy. Everybody was your guy. You cheered for our team. Thank you very much for doing that. That, that was a key part. Uh, uh. And so you've seen the videos, like, these guys were not afraid of big crowds. You know, they, they go to Madison Square Garden and it's sold out. And, you know, they go to Las Vegas and break the attendance record, uh, most watched game ever in the state of Nevada. And uh, beat Gonzaga. They, they, they have a hell of a month, get a little bit of a break, and COVID hits again. Yeah. It knocked us right on our butt. We took an eight to 10 day lull. And so that preparation really took a hit. But what we relied on was sound relationships and our guys kept getting better. This season, when it ended, and it ended in a very, very tough game on the biggest stage, where else would you wanna be? Who else would you rather play against than another great team? Who would not want to be in that arena? I know I wanted to be in it. More importantly, my team wanted to be in it. You guys were winners. And 13, 11, 13 months ago, there are a lot of banners here, but you got two of them, man. You have two of them. And for me, I'm going to do a good segue here. I'm going to switch hats. Uh, I think it's good. What the hell? <laughs> you made my final season one of the happiest that I've ever had. Unbelievable season. <laughs> I loved you guys and still love you. And when we lost that final game and we're in that locker room and everyone had tears in their eyes, 
tears on the floor, hugging one another. A smile broke on my, out of my face, and I said thank you to the basketball gods, because the biggest gift that the basketball gods could give me was a team that was either crying because they just won or crying because it was over and they lost. Thank you for giving me and the coaches that gift. It's a gift that you, you can't buy. You can only get it if you prepare and you have relationships that are that deep. You guys did that and you became one of the most successful teams that we've had here during my 42 years. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> so I've been talking about we. I'm going to talk about me, all right? Uh, wow, what a journey, you know. Uh, for me, I've wanted to do what I do since I was 16. 59 years ago, I knew I wanted to be a coach. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. God blessed me with parents that taught me how to work and believed in education. And along with that, they believed in me. And they taught me a lesson my mom did with an eighth grade education she said, you're never going to be able to achieve what you want to achieve by doing it alone. And I said, no, I'm pretty hot stuff, Ma. <laughs> you haven't seen me in the playground. and The other Colombo people, they think I'm pretty hot stuff. I didn't say that. You know, but I was thinking it the whole time. When you're, when you're 16, you're going to be or 14 at that time. And she said, hang out and be with good people. Be with good people. And if you're with good people, you'll be able to achieve something that you never could achieve alone. And it was the best advice I ever got. And it's the advice that I've used for me for actually the 47 years that I've been a head coach. That's why we recruited all you guys. That's why we recruited your families. You're damn good people. And when we put a bunch of good people together who know how to work and aren't going to be selfish, something really good can happen. I actually started coaching when I was in the Army. I've been coaching for 52 years. I, I was the coach, employer coach on the 5th Army Championship team at Fort Carson, Colorado. I was the player coach on the 8th Army team that won in, in, in Okinawa when I was 25. I was the USMA, the West Point prep school coach for two years when I was 26 and 27. So I've been coaching a long time. I always just, what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. I followed, tried to follow my heart. And I got the head coaching job at my alma mater, the greatest leadership school in the world, the United States Military Academy. So proud, so proud to be there. I'm wearing one of our national championship rings. I switched, I got a lot of rings. I switched those. The two rings I never take off are my wedding ring, which is curved, and my West Point ring. I took it off one time because the stone was broken and Mickey took it and she had a Duke stone put in it. No one has that. You know, no one has had that many good people. Because the best team that I've been on is that smaller ring. It's my family's team. I got lucky 53 years ago. You know, the best person I've ever recruited is sitting right in front of me. Mickey and I, Mickey and I have been partners in this. And the advice of being with good people 
I would add two other things to simple advice. And I write it a lot when I write autographs for kids. I said, follow your heart in the pursuit of your dreams. And a, the third thing that I put down besides get on the right bus is always try your best. Mickey believed in me and let me follow my heart to do what I wanted to do since I was 16. And we did it together. And as a result of all the teams that I've been on, Olympic national champions, the best team is sitting right in front of me. My wife, my three daughters, Debbie, Lindy, Jamie, their husband, Steve, Chris, and all my grandkids. I cannot tell you how happy I've been this month of March. Whenever I turned around behind our bench, you all were sitting there. My grandkids, can you, what a bus, what a dream. And it made me so happy to be able to share all this with all of you. I love you to death. And I promise you, I'm, I'm going to go to your dances, you know, your recitals, your games, your ninja, your whatever the hell you're doing, I'm going to be there. And uh, you guys have always been there for me. And... My mom was so right. Hang with good people. Be with good people. At Duke, I've spent most of my career, you know, 42 years. You know, that's, <laughs> yeah, wait till you see Shire and those guys do their thing. They're a hell of a lot better right now. There are two people, there are two people that have been, besides my family, the most important people for me here at Duke. Amazing people. And their wives are sitting at our table. The first person is Tom Butters. Um, My athletic director, my mentor, really, and the biggest believer in my talents as a coach that's ever been placed on this earth. Tom believed in me enough when I was 33, you know, coming from Army five years, I, he believed in me. No one, no one would have bet on that, me even getting the job. After three years, we uh, had a losing record. He still believed in me. And then we turned it around, and we've averaged almost 30 wins a year since then, except for the third time, he, he, he kept me. And in the mid-'90s, uh, I had a terrible setback in, in health, not just physical, but in mental health and resigned. And Tom, remember I was at your house and I was crying, I start crying now. And I said, I can't do this anymore. And as a West Pointer, if I, you can't do the mission, someone else should do the mission. And he told me, he said, you get well, I don't care how many years it takes, if it takes years, you're my guy. I needed that then more than anything. And so, Lynn, thank you for sharing your husband with me. And Lynn Butters is one of our guests tonight. <clears throat> I've had presidents here. That's what the school has, presidents. You know, Terry Sanford was, took 
Duke from, made Duke a heck of a lot better. He understood how to work a room. And Duke never felt that it needed to work a room and wasn't in a lot of rooms that they should be in. He knew he could handle himself extremely well. And did a, he was great for me. The person who was the best for me was Keith Brody. Keith was a brilliant man, and he ran our medical, ran the whole medical center, and then he became new president. And I can remember going in to see him the first time. I had never met him. I don't know if I ever told you this, Brenda. So I go into his office. Obviously, Keith is always smiling, and, and he comes from behind his desk, and his pants are six inches short, and he had holes in his sweater. And I said, oh my God, you know, this guy, this is guy, some guy from the Ivy Leagues or something that, you know, and, and we talked for an hour. And when I left his office, I said, I think I've just met the greatest man I've ever met in my life. And I was not wrong. Not only as my president, but also during the time I was having all my health problems. He, you, your family, you were there every day for me. Hang with good people. Hang with good people. You'll never do it alone. Thank you for hanging with me, both of you. God bless both of you for that. Uh, So I'm the luckiest guy on the planet. I'm happy as can be. I'm at peace. You know, I, I never looked back when I coached. But no, since the season's ended, I've looked back a little bit more on not just these 42 years, but the whole time I've been a coach. And I have loved Duke. Yeah, I... I I think I know Duke better than anyone, and no one can love it more than me because not, I'm not sure anyone's been here as long as I've been. <laughs> Duke and West Point and USA Basketball not only gave me a chance to hang with good people, it, it's given me a chance on a daily basis to, ha to hang with great people. They're not only great people, but they fulfill the other two simple things that I've always tried to do. You have a campus full of people who are always trying to do their best. They're always trying to get better. And then you have a campus full of people who are always following their hearts. I want to thank all of you for what you've done for my family and me. This will always be home. Obviously, this whole place and all of you will have a place in my heart always. Uh, it's been an honor. It's been an honor to be your coach. Thank you.